Hi, this is Mangianoni, and today I'm going to review Fear Farm. Fear Farm is located at 2209 North 99th Avenue in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's divided up into five haunts, and there's also a cornfield. We didn't go through the cornfield, though, so here's just the haunts. And actually, the haunts are just good enough to get it just to spend like, your evening on. Now, with the Chainsaw Mayhem, first thing I noticed right off the bat was it's really well put together. The house is very well done, has that dirty, uh, like you just don't want to touch it type look to it. And they do a really nice job concerning their space. You're going to go from big open areas to small, narrow areas. They have really good use of their cornfield, taking you from one location to another location in this area. And that was a really, really well um, job well done. The, a lot of the actors were really good. They are very aggressive when they come up to you. They don't say that, that they touch you or anything, but they target certain people and they play it right on with you know at their length of their area. So I give them props, especially in the pond area. That was really well done. Like one guy just I don't know why he latched onto me because like I wasn't scared and the two girls in front of us were definitely scared, but they definitely broke us up just from that. And um, the pond area actually was really well done and really was unexpected. Now, my main complaint about the Chainsaw Mayhem is this. There just was a lot of dead spaces. Now, that could just be because there wasn't enough actors that night, which is possible because that's what does happen with the, a lot of these haunted houses. You know, since it's not like a full, per, like full-time job and people are just either volunteering their time or working for minimal uh, salaries. But anyways, that put aside... That really didn't ruin our enjoyment of this haunt. The next one was Condemned. I thought Condemned was probably the weakest of all of the five. You know, this is another one of those, it's a plague town, there's zombies. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, I have not seen one haunted house that's done zombies good. Zombies are just not scary because they don't do anything. They just stand there and grunt. And you can tell what movie they watched right before they applied for this job based on what type of noises they make and this time a lot of them watched or played the last of us because that's the noise they were making and the thing is they weren't even using the mannerisms of the characters in um the last of us so that really like it's like what's the point you know you're just copying a sound that doesn't quite make sense to the people who know what it is but you know that aside it's really well put together still they do a really nice job again with using their space and the set designs were great. The third run, one we went into was Descent. Now, Descent is this alien uh, invasion type scenario, or it's like, or it's a secret laboratory base, I should say. This was probably the strongest one that we that I saw. Most of the haunts really didn't have any animatronics, but this one did, and those aliens looked awesome. They also had some characters in aliens, like alien suits, were really well. Like they were hidden well, they they came out at, just at the right time, and surprisingly, you just didn't see them until it was too late. My main complaint is it's too short, but that's actually a good complaint. Now, this one also had like bridges that you had to walk over, and it was really really well put together. And as a whole, one of the things I really did enjoy about all of these haunts was the fact is it's not flat. You know, they make you go up stairs, downstairs duck under things. It's a very, very effective use of space, and I wish more haunted houses would do things like that. The next was uh, Tremors and Flinch's uh, Fun House. I normally really hate Fun House haunts. They're just not scary. You know, they, uh, they just think that they can throw neon paint on the wall and it's going to terrify people. And, you know, this is no exception. They do the same thing. They throw the paint on the wall, and it's just, wow, I'm scared. But out of all of the fun house haunted houses that I've been into, this one had the best makeup. And that's what really set this one apart from everything else. The makeup, the makeup artist was, did a phenomenal job, and they really should be praised. And they, should just, they deserve a raise because the faces looked awesome. Now, while I wasn't scared, the girl, two girls in front of me who were hugging each other, twirling around in a circle, that was good. And that's how I know that the, the actors were really doing an ex excellent job with this, within this haunt. Now, one, another thing that I normally don't like about 
these types of rooms is, you know, they, they just do the same traditional, like I said, paint on the wall, and they don't really effectively use a funhouse idea. This one did. They had mirrors. They had um, things that you had to, like uh, curtain type things that you had to go through. People put on the other side that came out just at the right time to scare you. And they really did use a good job with that. There's like a trampoline even. It's not scary, but it's the thought that counts, that they're doing something that's more circus funhouse related rather than just neon paint and a couple people in clown suits. So this being what would probably be one of their signature haunts because it's their you know mascots, they really did a good job and um, it's definitely worth a go through. Final haunted house we went through was uh, Twisted Fairy Tales. This could have been so good. While you're going through the different scenes, and you can tell, in some cases, you can tell pretty easy what the fairy tale is supposed to be, but the problem is they don't do a good enough job with set design, which is a shame because you look at everything else that was done before it, and it's fantastic. But here, it looks like they just, it's, it's kind of like they have an idea of what a fairy tale looks like, but they don't know how to implement it on a design. You know, like for an example, I, we walked up to a, what we thought was the gingerbread house, you know, for Hansel and Gretel. And yeah, I mean, it kind of looked like it, but it, it needed to go that extra step like everything else did. And I think in terms of, um, that's what like really hurt this uh, haunt was just, I couldn't be immersed into it. But there was some really good moments throughout this whole haunted house. Like right at the beginning, like we were in a, a large group and personally I hate going in with a large group because you know either we're in the front and then we just zip right past them or we're behind and we're stuck suffering because the people in front of us won't move and then they get all the scares. Well right from the very beginning I'm telling you it was amazing. This guy just jumps out of nowhere. I watched I mean like if I was in front I might not have been able to see it but from the back, I saw it happen, and it was great. This girl is screaming, I got asthma, I got asthma. And all I'm thinking of is, what are you doing here? It's dusty, it's going to be scary, and you're screaming you got asthma. But I was laughing and enjoying myself right throughout this entire haunt. Um, the ending was great. You know, I, I don't really want to spoil much about it other than it's they do a fantastic job at setting it up. And as you're going towards the exit, there's like they do an effective um, scene with light. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is really scary. But the problem is, it doesn't, you know, you, while you have to go forward, you don't want to. But once you reach a certain point, there's nothing to push you out. And I think that this is where the missed opportunity is. The beginning is great, it just needs closure to get to send people running out of the haunt. And if they did that, you know, that's what would send this one, one room, you know, into like an amazing status. Um, overall, in this haunt, I'd say a lot of the actors were really good. They tried at least, and that's all I really expect. You know, like I know in some cases, this is very close to opening night. People are still trying to get into character. So I'm very flexible in that sense. And as long as I see them putting forth effort, trying hard, that's all that matters to me, and it shows that given, just give it a couple weeks type thing towards the end of the season, and everything is just going to just be put together quite nicely. Uh, there was another part where there were, it needed some animatronics, like they had this werewolf in a cage. It, if it wasn't a werewolf, it, I, and I know this is where people are going to go, you know, you're being stupid because it, you can't put a guy in a suit. But if there was a guy in a suit in a cage that would have been amazing like a beast werewolf creature reaching out trying to claw you that that's what it needed overall i was very surprised by fear farm as a whole i really wasn't going in with any expectation at all and i was very pleasantly surprised and i probably would rec definitely would recommend if you're to add this on your list of haunted houses it's a great value uh, for the the different for the amount of content that you get for the price and I think as a whole, uh, there's there's enough that's going on to, you know, maybe one haunt might not scare you, but there's definitely going to be another one there that will. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Rate the video, and I'll have more reviews later, so until next time.